AMD is getting a new memory sweet spot. The EU is going after Meta, not just Apple, and Intel is changing a lot of stuff for their upcoming era like chips. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this July 2nd, 2024, Tuesday, as it were. And it, as it were, it appears that the memory on the Zen 5 CPUs, which is gonna be the Ryzen 9000, has a new sweet spot. Currently with Ryzen 7000, you're picking up DDR5 RAM, you're gonna want it roughly in that 6000 mega transfer region because that's how you get it locked in at a one-to-one -one ratio and basically gives you the best performance on those CPUs as possible. Well, now looks like with Zen 5, Ryzen 9000, you're looking at getting 6400. That's how many mega transfers you're gonna want to have a sweet spot. And if you've already gotten a 6,000 mega transfers kit, sorry, you have to upgrade in order to have the best. That's just how the world turns. Everything gets faster and you get left behind. There's no such thing as future proofing. It's a bloated ideal of nonsense, which is what the EU is saying about Meta, Facebook, Instagram, bloated ideals of nonsense when it comes to how they've been operating, how data is collected on their sites. Because with the new Digital Markets Act that got rolled out earlier this year, the EU has required that you don't scrape as much data from the end consumer. So Facebook was like, okay, we can do that as long as you pay us for it. So they either have the take all your data option or pay them and not all of the data option. And the EU is now going after Meta for not offering a third option, which is reduced data and no pay. So that's essentially what they're saying that the DMA requires of Facebook and Instagram and all of the Meta accounts is that you should have the ability as a user to have limited data scraping, but then also you don't necessarily have to pay for the service. And so it looks like they're going after Meta the same way that they're going after Apple for all of their ridiculousness. The EU is saying that Meta's advertising model fails to comply with the DMA and that they want to empower citizens to be able to take control over their own data and choose a less personalized ad experience. But also one of the other things that got Meta into hot water was the fact that they were just labeling everything AI. If a photographer used some Photoshop tool that just happens to be AI, even though like the actual subject of the image is not like they used an AI remover to get rid of like some, Michael, what's a what's a common scenario that a, a photographer would want to get rid of something in a photo? You drop your hot dog mid picture? Yeah, if you drop your hot dog mid picture, you need to get the hot dog out of there. So if they use generative AI, not to necessarily add something to the image, but just kind of replace the background, which has been something that Photoshop has been able to do forever, but now it's just kind of faster and simpler. Meta was late labeling all of those photos as made with AI. So that bothered a lot of people because they were like, this isn't AI technic, like it, yes, I used an AI tool, but it's not an AI photo, it's very different. So now there's a little tag saying AI info. So you, you know that there is some form of AI. This is a, a complicated scenario as we're getting into uh, having content disclosures with generative experiences. And are you able to tell when AI has been used and when it hasn't, it doesn't always need to be disclosed and all of these these little check boxes that uh, even YouTube is now requiring for content creators to check off if they've used AI to substantially alter or drastically uh, enhance certain things that uh, you shouldn't be doing allegedly according to them. But they're trying to fix it, so that's that's good. And Reese is gonna try to fix you. No, not that way. He's trying to fix your wallet, make it heavier with all the money you're saving. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Once again, I'm cold, but hey, there are deals. And starting off today, it seems like Mountain's having a bit of clearance because their Everest 60% hot swappable mechanical keyboard is available for only $19.99, making it $120 off the listing price. But then next, we have the NZXT H7 Flow ATX mid -tower case available in white for a very nice price of $69.99, making it $60 off. And then lastly, the always great Ryzen 7 5700X 2D is going for only $192.98, making it $56.02 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, Mind you off back to bread for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, looks like you get a pretty sweet deal if you choose to pick up an NVIDIA CPU. Well, as long as it's the great CPU that has 72 cores, not something your average person's gonna try to get their hands on. But now, according to benchmarks, it's actually quite performant at, when you compare it to AMD's high-end Threadripper chip, the 72 core gray CPU coming in with a 74,000 multi-core score. Its single core score is a little bit more disappointing coming in at 1600, which is significantly lower than a bunch of different 
CPUs out there. AMD's current latest stuff, the Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite that I tested in uh, Sunday's video, which you can check out right up there. But that single core score, while being less than kind of everything on the market, the multi-core score is very close to what a 96 core Threadripper. It's getting within 10%, even though it has 24 fewer cores. Looks like Nvidia knows how to make a CPU. They're just not gonna bring it to the end consumer. It's just for all of the AI stuff. And Intel's trying to convince you, again, that it does know how to make a CPU. They've been making a lot of changes. We covered a lot of the architecture restructuring that they've been doing in things like Lunar Lake, which is supposed to come out to thin and light laptops. We got to do the Intel tech tour on that side. But now we're getting some leaked insider info onto how Arrow Lake, which is the desktop equivalent, is going to look when it comes to how Intel wants you to use it. And that is with the restructuring of its P cores and E cores. It's no longer gonna be a ring bus situation, as you can see, right here where they're all sharing the same l3 cache around a ring which is why it's called the ring bus but instead it looks like they're going to have staggered clusters of cpus you have the p cores then a cluster of e cores then p cores and then clusters of e cores which should potentially lower the latency when it comes to the communication between cores and how of all of those interface so you shouldn't have as much latency which could potentially impact game and performance and a whole bunch of other stuff there additionally one of the things that intel did talk at length about when it came to lunar like and how they're restructuring the core situation is that thread director is now going to work differently. At least on the mobile side, instead of trying to bring things to the P cores, then the E cores, it starts from the E cores, goes up to the P cores so that you can start with efficiency and then go to power. But also one of the reasons they got rid of hyper threading on the laptop side of things was because it was always being used as a last mile solution. You would go to the P cores, then you go to the E cores, and then you would go to hyper threading. And by the time you got there, you're using a ton of power for not a lot of gain. However, that's likely to be less of a concern when it comes to the desktop side of things. I saw somebody's comment in Hot News yesterday where they were asking, what do you think about Intel getting rid of hyper-threading? At least according to what they brought us at Intel Tech Tour, that was a specific decision made for Lunar Lake because they were targeting power per platform per area. So they wanted to highly optimize the amount of power efficiency that was going into Lunar Lake. That's less likely to happen here when it comes to Error Lake or at least the desktop chips. But one of the neat features that did come to Lunar Lake, which I'm curious if we're gonna get in Arrow Lake, is the ability to actually turn off P cores when they're not being utilized and instead just focus on efficiency completely, which I don't know if that necessarily matters too much in something like a desktop situation, but we'll have to wait and see how all of that plays out. But we didn't just get a leaked look at how the CPU architecture is gonna look. We also got a leaked look at how the motherboard chipset's gonna operate. The LJA 1851 platform on the Z890 chipset got some details shown off about it. And it looks like it's gonna have more PCI Express lanes, gonna have faster RAM support, it's gonna have Thunderbolt 4 support baked in, and it's gonna have a lot of USB support as well as Wi-Fi 7 support. So a lot of good things being added to it. However, one of the things that's being removed is DDR4 support, which is something that Z690 and Z790 currently have either or. You could do DDR4 or DDR5. Arrow Lake's gonna switch over to DDR5 completely, which is what AMD did with Ryzen 7000. So this is not necessarily unprecedented. Intel just gave you a stopgap couple of generations before you had to upgrade your RAM. but you are getting four more PCI Express Gen 5 lanes on this setup. The RAM supports DDR5 6400 mega transfers at a native speed, which is equivalent to what the best uh, case scenario is on AMD. Intel's operation when it comes to RAM and RAM speed is a little different than it is with AMD and with Ryzen, so it's not necessarily 64 is gonna be the best, but that's gonna be the default speed that the next generation Arrow Lake setup is going to look like it wants. And you guys want me to read your comments, so let's go over your comments from yesterday's episode of hot news over on float plane we got scarfo saying at eight minutes you said what i've been wanting for these x3d chips do you think we will get all the cores to a higher frequency or we'll have one set down clock like we do on the 7000 series i don't know i don't presume to know it amd at least in the coy little interviews that they've been doing on x3d chips seems like they are fundamentally changing a few things behind the scenes so i wouldn't dare to guess how they're gonna fundamentally work but i do think that whatever we know about 7000 x3d chips can't just transfer over to 9000 x3d i think there's going to be a lot of variation that you'll just have to re-familiarize yourself in case you're moving over to that platform then over on youtube we got shadow lemon saying apple makes iphones more repairable also apple zap zap to remove your battery technically it's easier to remove that way you just need a specialized tool it is more repairable to 
Apple. Good. And then we got Z-Shrink saying, we had economics with Brett that talked about profit margins and then living as an adult with Brett where he reminds us to get a prostate exam. I mean, if you're old enough to remember four different GPU companies like thoroughly competing with each other, prostate cancer is no joke, my friends. Get to get your colonoscopy. It's not a big deal, right, Michael? They don't check that. Is that not where you get it done? Colonoscopy's different. Yeah, but you should still get one of those, right? Same location, different street. Ah, okay. But still, you should get a colonoscopy at a certain age to check for cancer, colorectal cancer, yeah? Uh, absolutely. Just just go to your doctor. This is medical advice. Go go to your doctor and get screened for things. And then we got QWERTY saying, July 1st is actually still the first half of the year. It's the 183rd day of the year, and there's still 183 more days left. So July 2nd is the second half of the year. <laughs> Goddess of War says, you're wrong this year. Because it's a leap year, there's an extra day, February 29th. So he is right. July 1st in a four year is the beginning of the second half. To clarify, this is the 183rd day with 183 to go. Technically, however, the moment you take even one minute into this day, it starts to flip from the GC, at least if the understanding is right. But I could see this, this is the 183rd. It doesn't matter. Guys, stop it with the pedantry. Goodness. Goodness, goodness. Out of all of the things I thought was going to be argued from yesterday's episode of Hot News, me saying that July is the second half of the year had to be challenged. You live like this? Go, go get your prostate checked, friends. And then we got Ninja saying, Brett, you are almost to a million. Holy crap, dude. I've been watching you since you had like 25K. I can't believe you're almost to a million already. Congrats, bro. It's been like a decade. <laughs> it's It's been a long journey to get here. So um, I don't necessarily feel like the already component of it, but thank you. It is. It has been a wild journey. This should theoretically, based on how th things have been trajectorizing be the last month and we should we should hit a million towards the end of July which is going to be fun it's going to be exciting Woo! yeah and we got Andrew Geiger saying Kyle must be hyped for the new Bill Murray album my hog is thoroughly cranked as of two days ago when it released to which I, I replied Kyler wasn't as hyped as me and Reese were I had to inform him that American Motorsports dropped on Friday I didn't know Country Core was a was a genre that I wanted to listen to, but I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. But I'm not here for any more hot news. I'm, I'm done with this episode. I'll check you back here for more of the hottest tech news tomorrow.